if you are not a regular viewer of my channel and you have come upon this video because you were looking for ways to deal with grief and YouTube recommended this video, then I am really, really sorry that your life has you in this situation right now. It's awesome that you are taking steps to help yourself and I hope that something in my research will come of use to you. What we need to understand is that grief, it could be because of the demise of a loved one. It could also be the loss of your income, your home, your surroundings. If you are a regular viewer of WAC, then I hope that this video will help you while you are interacting with people who are dealing with grief. In the first wave of COVID-19, I honestly did not know that many people who fell sick. But this time around, I personally had lost parents of friends and loved ones. And my coping mechanism was to dive into researching grief and making this video. The tips and techniques that I am sharing with you in this video has been given to us by Shraddha Sidwani, a psychologist and a psychotherapist. She is the founder of Reality and You Foundation. My name is Freesia, this is WAC, and if this video can help even one person, then I will consider it a job well done. If you know someone who could benefit from this video, please share it with them. Or better still, share it with everyone. Because right now, we all know at least one person whose life has been impacted by COVID-19. In this video, I'm going to explain the basic types of grief. What happens when we grieve? What we can do for ourselves? And more importantly, what we can do to help others with their grieving. Each section has been time stamped. So if you feel that you are in a hurry, you could always jump to the section that you feel is going to be relevant to you. Although I would recommend that you do invest time and watch the entire video. Because unfortunately, at some point, grief hits everyone. Students of psychology will divide the types of grief into eight to 10 divisions. But simply put, there are two types of grief. Micro grief, which is what you would experience with the loss of a job or your lifestyle or loss of a routine. Even though these are pretty heartbreaking, the situation is reversible in the long run. Hopefully, another job will come in the future and civilization will get vaccinated and we will be able to put the effects of the pandemic behind us. Macro grief is the kind of grief that is felt when there is an irreversible loss of an irreplaceable person, the death of a loved one. In both cases, humans have to deal with grief in similar stages, but the intensity, that is what changes from person to person. So let's get to the five stages of grieving. Denial, which can take the form of either pretending to be strong or becoming outwardly emotionless to the shock. Anger. Now this usually manifests in the form of blaming oneself or others for what has just happened. Bargaining is a stage where we try to beg, cheat or apply logic to a situation that our brain it just can't wrap itself around. Whether it's a higher power or another person or yourself, it is human to try and see if one can reverse the loss. Depression something that all of us have felt in varying degrees throughout our lives. Interestingly, the depression that one does feel while they are grieving is not considered as clinical depression by psychologists for up to three months after experiencing loss. Beyond 90 days, if one is still depressed, then they will be considered as clinical depression and not grief. The fifth stage is acceptance, where we realize or remind ourselves the universe, it works in very mysterious ways and most of it, it's beyond our control. And now I need to move on. A sixth stage has been recently accepted and that is the stage of meaning. When we try to give a larger purpose and make some kind of sense of death, this could be through acts of charity and love towards those who are still alive and around us. Now, although all of us will go through these stages of grief, each of us will do it in our own method. We will take as much time as is needed in each stage. And it's not necessary that everybody will experience grief in exactly this order. Grieving is as unique 
as a fingerprint. In the healthy way, you are patient with yourself. You allow yourself as much time as your heart needs. Crying is healthy. Talking to others is considered to be one of the best ways to heal. In fact, I have listed in the description below organizations and agencies that are offering free help to those in need. We need to understand that the grief that one is going through, it's not an illness. And sometimes reaching out to people who have experienced the same thing as you can be very helpful. In our culture, after the Chautha or the Tevi, first of all, the support system that has surrounded us in terms of family and friends, they suddenly go back to their normal lives, leaving us alone. And everyone expects one to just magically become normal. As if 13 days is the outer limit for feeling bad when you have lost a loved one. Also in the healthy way of grieving, we must limit our intake of alcohol and other substances that numb the pain. These methods, they only have a very temporary effect. Instead, try and make small changes by starting to establish a routine we all know the mind-body connection and there are much healthier ways to get that dopamine fix. They say that pain is inevitable, but that suffering, it's optional. Suffering is what your mind does and our minds can be very cruel to us during grief. So literally put aside a worry time. Try and give yourself a time slot, a particular time slot in which you will grieve so that for the rest of the day, you can go on with your normal activities without dwelling in it. A lot of people will feel that they will forget the person and the memories that they have created with them, they won't stay in their minds if they don't think of them often or all the time. But that is not the case. It is very important to distract yourself from depressing thoughts and you should trust that your memories, they will be there with you when you feel like spending time with that person. Another thing to consider is that the loved one that you are grieving, they would feel really terrible if they knew that you were suffering more than necessary. So it is a nice way to honor someone's memory by moving on and eventually seeking happiness. Give yourself the permission to restart and live your life again. You might see a sibling with whom that you shared the same loss acting in a very different way than you and that is their way of coping with loss. I keep saying that each of us is different and our reaction to situations, well, they cannot be the same. I know of people who have lost a parent or a spouse and have managed to keep their chin up, while I know of people on the other hand who have lost a job and have been emotionally shattered by it. It's very easy to judge others and say there is no comparison. The only thing you should not compare is your feelings versus others. If you want to feel bad, you have the right. Losing a job and becoming financially handicapped, that sucks big time. This is especially true when it happened for no fault of your own. I'm going to let you in on a secret, something that no one says out loud, but a lot of people know. HR is not there to look after the employees. HR is there to protect the company from anything that the employees might do. When companies downsize, it is usually the HR department that is entrusted with the ugly act of firing people. A lot of times they will be cold and seemingly unfair, ignoring years of loyalty and hard work. Now to take this personally is immature and it helps no one. Even with micro grief, it is important to be patient and deal with your feelings. Brushing emotions under the carpet, now that will only hurt you in the long run. Tell yourself that you're feeling bad and that you will allow yourself to feel bad for two to three weeks. Eventually, your own survival instinct will help you rise above it. You might doubt yourself and put ugly labels like loser and hopeless and the minute you find yourself doing that, stop. You might have to do jobs that are below your previously held stature, but that's okay. We all have to do things that we don't like to do in order to survive. In tough times, remember it's very important to be flexible. Remember also that no one has the time and the brain space to judge you as much as you are judging yourself. 
If your ego is stopping you, then your ego is also harming you. At the end of the day, when the situation in the market and the world goes back to normal, which it will eventually, because nothing is permanent, you should be ready, positive and energetic. So what can you do for someone else that is grieving? Most importantly, listen and listen non-judgmentally. Sometimes people just need a good release. Freud himself believed in talk therapy as one of the best means of expressing oneself. So all you need to do is be a good listener. If you want to improve your listening skills, I've spoken about it in this video. Check in on that person. And checking in, it doesn't have to be, hey, how are you doing? Because half the time, people who are grieving will just say, I'm okay for the sake of it. Checking in, it could also mean that you send a funny story or a song to that person because that reminded you of them. Most importantly, don't try to fix the person's grief. It doesn't need fixing, unless of course the signs are so intense or they've asked you. So reduce your expectations from that person. Don't force them too much and just be a pillar of support. Grief needs time and space. And often that person will get over things and come back to you. So in our darkest of times, if you can understand what you are going through, if you can accept it and move on, then eventually you will heal. In the comment section, I would love it if each and every one of you comes in and shares your tips, your techniques and your resources, something that would be helpful to everyone out there. My name is Frisia. This is WAC and I'd like to give a big shout out to all my Patreon members. Thank you so much for supporting me and my work. You can come and join my Patreon as well. The link is in the description below. I'll catch you guys again very soon. Ciao.